Grace to, pe- grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration on this final Sunday of the Advent season is the second lesson that we heard a few minutes ago. St. Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write these words in the first chapter of his letter to the Romans. He said, To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's word. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, descendant of David, the eternal Son of God, dear friends. My grandfather on my father's side did not go by a name that people would have expected him to. You see, when my grandfather was born, he was given the name Henry, specifically Henry Christian Merton. So you would expect that people would have called him Henry or maybe short for that Hank, but you'd be wrong. Nobody called him that for a good reason. You see, he wasn't the only boy in the family named Henry. He had two other brothers who were also given the first name Henry. Why my great-grandparents thought it was a good idea to name three of their sons the same thing, I have absolutely no idea, but that's what they did. So, to avoid confusion, all three of those brothers went by their second name. Nobody ever called them Henry. My grandfather, throughout his entire life, was known as Christian, or short for that, Christ. If somebody were to come up to my grandfather and call him Henry, you would know immediately that person did not know my grandfather. That was not the name he went by, even though that happened to be the name that he was given at birth. In our second lesson this morning, St. Paul also calls some people a name that they didn't normally go by, a name they probably weren't used to hearing, maybe had never been called before. The Roman Christians, the Christian congregation in the city of Rome, probably could have forgiven Paul for calling them a strange name because he didn't really know them. In fact, he had never met them. When Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, he had never set foot in Rome. Not yet. He would later on as a prisoner, but he had never been there before, never met those people. And yet the name that he gave them, even though it wasn't a name that they probably were used to hearing, was their real name. It was an accurate name. And that name was Saints. This fourth Sunday of Advent, as we wrap up our preparations to welcome and receive our Savior into our hearts and welcome and be ready for His coming again on Judgment Day, let's consider that name. And some other names too, Advent names, names that were true not only of the the Roman Christians 2,000 years ago, but of us as well. Saint is is not a word we throw out lightly. You you do hear it though once in a while. Sometimes people are called saints, and I don't just mean the NFL team from New Orleans, but maybe we find ourselves once in a while calling someone a saint. Maybe they, they do something extraordinary for you. They go above and beyond to help you out and you say, oh, you're a saint. We think of, in that context, in that sense of the word, a saint being a good person who does some good things. But that's not really what the word means. That word, as St. Paul used it in our lesson this morning, literally means Holy, holy ones. Not just somebody who's good or pretty good or good enough, but perfect. I mean, that's an adjective, a name that that we would normally only give to, to God and I suppose also His perfect angels. And so I'm guessing that when, when those, r- r- those uh, first Christians in Rome who read, the first people to read this letter or hear it read to them, and they heard Paul say, saints, they might have been thinking to themselves, obviously he doesn't know us very well, because <laughs> that's not what we are. It's not what I am anyway. 
That's a surprising name, an unusual name, a, a strange name. Not only because Paul didn't know him, but because later on in, in that same letter that he wrote to those Roman Christians, he said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Those Christians at Rome weren't holy and perfect. They were sinners. They knew it, Paul knew it, and yet he called them saints. Strange. But there's other strange, in fact, even more strange and unusual names that Paul uses in these opening words to his letter to the Romans. He, he starts out the letter by saying, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. Strange names were not just what he called the Roman Christians, it's what he called himself. Strange, unusual because of who Paul was and what he had done. Paul, earlier in his life, had dedicated himself to wiping out the Christian church. He thought it was his mission to hurt Christians, to arrest them. He even had a hand in the death of at least some Christians. His goal was to completely eradicate the Christian church. And yet, he called himself an apostle, a servant of Christ Jesus? Strange name. Strange name, because it sounds like either Paul had a very short memory or, or maybe he was a little bit delusional about himself. He didn't know those Roman Christians from Adam, if you want to use that phrase. He didn't know them at all, and yet he called them saints. But here's where it gets even stranger, even more unusual, even more surprising. That name... In fact, all of those names that we just heard apply to us. Those are our names too. Saints, belonging to God, servants of Christ. Peter, the Apostle Peter, in his first letter, a letter that was addressed not to a specific group of people or a congregation or a person, but to Christians in general, all Christians, including you and me. He said, you are a chosen people, a, holy na a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. You have been given the name holy, saint. You are a servant of Christ. You belong to Him. You and I, who are just as sinful as St. Paul and those Christians at Rome. Strange name. And yet it's a true name. You see, it wasn't just St. Paul or someone else who gave us that name. It's God himself who names you his saints, his people, his servants. So why is that? How could that name be true? Well, we could call these names Advent names. They're Advent names because they are true only because of the coming of Christ, the Savior who was promised, the Savior who came. It's His coming that makes these true names for us. But it isn't just us. We're not the only ones who have received Advent names. Our Savior also has Advent names that we heard in our lessons this morning. St. Paul gives Jesus some names in our second lesson. He first of all says, who, uh, according to his human ancestry, a human, he calls him. He calls him a human descended from David. Well, we heard how that name, that description of Jesus was fulfilled. We heard about that in our gospel this morning when the angel Gabriel came to Joseph, who was a descendant of David. The angel addressed him as a son of David and announced to him that his fiancé was going to give birth, a fiancé named Mary, who also just happened to be a descendant of David. Jesus was indeed a descendant of David and true human. But that's not the only name St. Paul gives to him. He then goes on to call him the Son of God. Now talk about 
a surprising and unusual name to be given to a tiny, unborn, developing, helpless baby inside of a woman. A, a, a tiny, naked baby that was laid in a, in a Bethlehem manger. A man who grew up to be homeless and despised and ultimately condemned and tortured and nailed to a cross. God? How could that name possibly be true? How could that possibly be an accurate name for Jesus? And yet it is. And St. Paul tells us why we can be sure of that. He says at the beginning of the letter, as he talks about Jesus being a descendant of David, he says, And who, through the Spirit of holiness, was declared with power to be the Son of God, by his resurrection from the dead. Now, I know we're only a couple of days away from Christmas, so probably Easter is not on our mind right now, right? We're not thinking about Jesus' death and resurrection, but we should be. We should be. Because without that important fact, none of our celebrations mean anything. Then all those names that were given to us are lies. Then we're not saints of God. We don't belong to him. And Jesus isn't the son of God. And we've got nothing to celebrate. But the fact of the matter is that little baby truly was and is the son of God. He not only was born, he died. He not only died, he rose again. And that means all of those other names that were given to Jesus that we heard this morning are also true. He is Emmanuel. He is God who came to be with us. He is Jesus, the name that means Savior. He took away our sins and made it so that we truly are His saints. These are Advent names. Names that are true because Jesus came into this world. It doesn't matter what other people call you or think of you or what you maybe think of yourself or call yourself sometimes. If people think of us or we think of ourselves as worthless sinners who don't deserve anything from God. Well, on the one hand, we'd say, yeah, you're right, except that's no longer the reality. You got a new name. Not just a title, not like one of those honorary degrees that sometimes people are awarded that don't mean anything. This is not just your name. This is your identity. Your Advent name. You are God's saints. You are His people. Not just during the season of Advent. This is your name forever. Amen.